Hey guys, welcome to our weekly news show here on Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host, and today we're gonna to be talking about Ola Electric's new e-scooter manufacturing plant, the removal of White Hat Jr.'s latest ads, phone pays rise to become India's largest UPI player, Rapido's troubled launch in Mumbai, Flipkart's latest gaming acquisition, all of the latest funding news and more coming up right after this. All right, so first up in the news, according to numerous media reports, Ola Electric is in talks with various Indian state governments, including Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, and Maharashtra, to set up the world's largest e-scooter manufacturing plant. This manufacturing facility is expected to be spread over 100 acres of land with an annual production capacity of 2 million units. That's 20 lakh units. The reports also suggest that this is going to be a state-of-the-art facility that uses solar energy to keep its carbon footprint at zero. Ola Electric is looking to start production of its electric scooters within the next 18 to 24 months. Now, Ola Electric hasn't yet confirmed this news, but I think it's worth noting that earlier this year in May, Ola Electric acquired Amsterdam-based e-scooter manufacturer Etergo. And it was during this acquisition that Ola Electric announced that they were looking to launch their own electric scooters in India in 2021. Equipped with Etergo's engineering capabilities and India's manufacturing supply chain, Ola Electric is well positioned to revolutionize India's electric two-wheeler market. That being said though, their entry into the e-scooter market is going to put them in direct competition with manufacturers like Aether Energy, Bajaj Auto, Hero Electric, and Okinawa. Ola Electric wants to put 1 million electric vehicles onto India's roads by 2021. And they're also working to strengthen India's EV infrastructure by establishing numerous battery swapping and charging stations. So far, Ole Electric has raised $300 million, that's 2,222 crore rupees. So we're gonna move on to the next news item in just a second, but before we do, if you haven't already subscribed, and I know a majority of you guys who are watching this video right now have not subscribed, make sure to do that right now because we post new videos every single week about Indian startups, entrepreneurs, and the latest news. Also, if you wanna become a more active member of the Backstage with Millionaires community, we recently set up a Discord server, and you can also go check us out on Instagram because we post news items there every single day. We're gonna be putting links to both of those along with links about everything that we're going to be talking about in this video in the description down below. All right, next up in the news, let's talk about EdTech startup White Hat Jr.'s controversial ad campaign. Back in August of 2020, White Hat Jr., which is a coding platform for kids, made headlines when they were acquired by Indian EdTech unicorn Baiju's for $300 million or 2,250 crore rupees at the time. Flush with cash from this acquisition, White Hat Jr. decided to launch a series of ads. However, unfortunately, Unfortunately for White Hat Jr., the Advertising Standard Council of India, after receiving 15 complaints about seven of these ads, told the startup that they needed to take down five of those ads on the grounds that they were making dubious and unsubstantiated claims. But what was so controversial about these ads in the first place? Well, it looks like the biggest reason why people were upset about them is because they were designed to create FOMO, that's fear of missing out, amongst Indian parents. And just as an example, one of these ads showed a group of investors fighting over who was going to invest in an app that was designed by a kid who learned how to code using White Hat Jr. These ads also used images of prominent people like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and Sundar Pichai to drive home their message. And it's gotten to the point where even prominent Indian entrepreneurs have spoken out against these ads. For example, Amod Malviya, who's the co-founder of B2B unicorn Udan, posted a tweet that said there's something deeply cringeworthy about ads that feed FOMO of Indian parents. Kind of upsetting, actually. Responding to the controversy, White Hat Jr.'s founder and CEO Karan Bajaj in a LinkedIn post said that feedback on our marketing needing improvement is well taken. We'll do better with it. However, the controversies don't stop there. White Hat Jr. has been accused on social media of allegedly censoring dissent. Multiple people on social media have claimed that their posts, which were critical of White Hat Jr.'s products or campaigns have been wiped from the internet, apparently on the basis of copyright infringement. And that's one of the reasons why we in this video haven't even been showing videos of White Hat Jr.'s ad campaigns. This situation is obviously not ideal for White Hat Jr. 
as they're planning on expanding globally, and this series of controversies may very well affect their growth. All right, next up in the news, Indian digital payments giant PhonePay has registered 835 million UPI transactions, that's 83.5 crore UPI transactions, in the month of October, making it the leader in the UPI payments category. This is the first time in more than a year that Google Pay, which recorded around 820 million UPI transactions, that's 82 crore UPI transactions, did not end up coming out on top. Apart from these two, Paytm recorded 240 45 million UPI transactions, that's 24.5 crore UPI transactions, and Amazon Pay recorded around 125 million, that's 12.5 crore. Over the last four years, UPI has grown to become the most popular form of digital payments in India. UPI itself crossed the milestone of 2 billion transactions, that's 200 crore transactions last month. And they've processed payments worth $51.9 billion, that's 3.86 lakh crore rupees. According to Credit Suisse, India's mobile payments market is expected to be worth $1 trillion, that's 74 lakh crore rupees by 2023. All right, next up in the news, earlier this week, bike taxi startup Rapido, which enables users to book bike taxis for their everyday commute, had launched their services in Mumbai. The startup reported that they had already onboarded 2,000 bike drivers and that they were going to be onboarding 2 lakh drivers, that's 200,000 drivers, over the course of the next two years to further expand their operations. However, immediately after their launch in the city, the transport authorities in Mumbai told them that they needed to shut down their services in the city as they hadn't yet received permission from the Maharashtra government to operate their taxi service. The Antheri Regional Transport Office has given the startup seven days to reply to their notice and warned the company that they would face punitive actions if they didn't comply. This has understandably put Rapido and their 2,000 bike drivers in a pretty tricky situation. All right, next up in the news, e-commerce giant Flipkart has acquired mobile gaming startup MechMocha for an undisclosed amount as they're planning on using mobile games to retain and gain new users on their platform. Founded by Arpita Kapoor and Mohit Rangaraju in 2014, MechMocha offers a social gaming platform called Hello Play. On this platform, gamers can play games and also interact with other gamers in their local languages. With this acquisition, Flipkart will be gaining access to MechMocha Mocha's intellectual property, their games, and of course, their skilled team. Flipkart is also going to be using this acquisition to further expand their own gaming platform called Flipkart Game Zone, which saw some pretty substantial growth during the pandemic. The company is hoping that if they're able to keep first-time e-commerce users engaged using games and video content, then these users will eventually feel comfortable enough to make their first transactions on the platform. All right, moving on to some funding news now, HR tech startup Lena AI has raised $8 million, that's 59.2 crore rupees, from investors like Graycroft, Adam Miller, who's the founder of Cornerstone On Demand, Alan Petrikoff, who's the chairman of Graycroft, Jim Mofat, who's the former chairman and CEO of Deloitte Consulting, and Samir Bodas, who's the founder of Insertis. Founded by Adit Jain, Mayank Goyal, and Anand Prajapati in 2015, Lena AI offers a scalable AI chatbot platform, which addresses most of a company's HR needs like streamlining employee workflows like leave management, payslip generation, and providing actionable insights to enhance employee engagement. Over the last nine months, the startup has managed to expand its customer base to over 100 enterprise customers like Coca-Cola, AirAsia, Puma, and Vodafone. They're going to be using these fresh funds to further expand their customer base while also strengthening their AI platform by adding more employee workflows. All right, next up in the funding news, EV charging startup ChargeZone has raised $3 million, that's 22.2 crore rupees, in its pre-Series A round from investors like Venture Catalysts, Mumbai Angels, Kiritsu Forum, and the Ramakrishnan Family Office. Founded by Kartiki Haryani and Pavan Bakari in 2018, ChargeZone wants to help accelerate EV adoption in India by providing a robust network of electric charging stations across the country. The startup is doing this by enabling 
allowing EV users to find charging stations, pre-book charging slots, and they're also providing information about charging connectors on their app. The startup claims to serve more than 500 EVs every single day through their network of more than 120 fast charging stations across seven cities. These fresh funds are going to help ChargeZone to scale their operations, and they're also going to help them to move towards their goal of building 1 million charging stations, that's 10 lakh charging stations, in the next 10 years. All right, next up in the funding news, Agritech startup Egos has raised $1.5 million, that's 11.1 .1 crore rupees, in its pre-Series A round from Avana Capital and Rebrite Partners. Founded by Abhishek Negi, Uttam Kumar, Aditya Singh, and Pankaj Pandey in 2017, Egos is helping egg farmers to increase the quality and productivity of eggs by integrating its smart farm technology, which uses IoT sensors in egg farms to help them monitor the health of their chickens, environmental temperature, air quality, and water consumption. By offering end-to-end -end support, Egos is able to ensure a consistent supply of high-quality eggs and provide increased earnings for their partner farmers. The startup is going to be using this fresh capital to strengthen its technology platform, partner with more farmers to increase its supply, add new products, and expand into new markets. All right, that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires, and I will see you in the next one.